your host, Nadim Mohammed, attorney in Johannesburg with my co-host, Ashraf Hesop. And we are back with you on Legal Ease, the show that converts legal jargon into legal ease. Today's show, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a two-part show. We promised you some exciting, some, some exciting news, some exciting stories, uh, a nice, uh, uh, exciting segment regarding two different, uh, two vastly different uh, parts of the law. The one we've been looking at court in, the court interpreter's role uh, in the courtroom, specifically relating to criminal matters. Um, and the, excite, the, 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 the the surprising stuff of that I will show you now when we introduce our guest. The second part of the show will be a live crossing to a Skype interview uh, regarding the Kazi trial. And most of you will know the Kazi trial was a dramatic and tragic event in the Muslim community and in South Africa as a whole, where it was the first Islamophobic fatality in the country. Uh, we'll be chatting there to attorney Yusha Taub, and he is an attorney mandated by the Muslim Lawyers Association uh, who has had a great influence uh, in the Kazi trial, both with, as a liaison with the family as well as with the state prosecution. But right now, let's go to our guest on the show, Abdulaziz Maluleka. Abdulaziz, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, you might be surprised as to why I said Ahlan wa Sahlan to Abdulaziz Maluleka, but that is the surprising thing. In fact, Abdulaziz is a fluent court inter interpreter, both in the Urdu and in the Arabic languages. Uh, a very quick introduction, Abdulaziz, uh, as how I met Abdulaziz. Uh, I was at court, at the Johannesburg Magistrates Court, and I was pacing up and down the courtroom, uh, and I was feeling quite tense and nervous. I had a big case coming up, and out of the shadows came this huge figure, with a beautiful beard and uh, bright eyes. And he looked at me and he said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And I greeted him and I said, Wa alaikum salam. But what was surprising was his next words which followed. And he said, Entemineen ya akhi. That took me by surprise. In Arabic, it meant, Where are you from, brother? I thought to myself, this, this black South African man, because for all intents and purposes, that's what he was. He's speaking to me in Arabic. So I asked, how it was that he spoke Arabic. And now we're going to find out exactly what I found out and how I was so taken aback by Abdulaziz. Abdul, you are a court interpreter at the Johannesburg Magistrates Court. You are fluent in both Urdu and Arabic. Just give us a brief background. How did you get to where you are and where did you come from? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi I make salam again since... Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, one of the teachings of our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Afshu salama baynakum. That we should make salam a habit, you know, spread it and make it a habit. Now, uh, it started uh, when I was at high school in Sushanguve High. That's where I was born. I was born and bred in Sushanguve, north of Pretoria. Mm -hmm. On Fridays, I used to see these uh, students in, in, you know, in white robes. And it reminded me of the prophets we used to see on TV. You know, whenever there's a story, you know, to tell about Jesus, mm -hmm. Moses, Abraham, all of them were, in, you know, in those white gowns, beard. Although those people didn't have a beard similar, you know, yes, to mine, but uh, they did resemble those prophets, and it did, you know, attract my attention. Uh, on uh, one occasion, I went to, you know, inquire. I wanted to know about uh, this religion, Islam. I was a Christian then, you know. I come from a Christian family. My father was also a priest. Sure. He studied theology. Also. So already some tough challenges right early in your, in, in your start. Yes. In your path. Yes. <laughs> so when I went to uh, this fellow, the, the first answer he gave me, you know, which, uh, which dropped my jaw, in fact, you know, because we thought that uh, Muslims, or pe we thought that Islam is maybe an Indian religion where they'll be worshipping, you know, mm -hmm. a God with, you know, different shapes and all these things. Uh, I mean, I never expected a man to tell me about, uh, you know, the Creator. Mm -hmm. He said to me that uh, we both believe in God, but, uh, you know, the difference is uh, that we believe in God alone. And we all also worship him alone. We don't involve any other God. You know, we don't ascribe partners to, to God. It made sense to me. You know. And I think this thing, you know, <clears throat> it came back to me after I, under, I understood, you know, after I studied uh, uh, Islam, after I went to Madrasa, when, where it was said that uh, every soul, every child is born in Islam. You know? I mean, Mam and Mawlud and Nila Yulad al-Fitra. 
you know, for walidani here, you know, Sironi, I'm here with Dani. You know, that every child is born in Islam, it is only his parents, or, or the environment, you know, that changes the, that, uh, that, uh, that child. I mean, th that nafs in me, that fitra in me accepted, uh, you know, that message or the answer coming from that brother. Can I stop you there, Ashraf? Do you, did you, you heard now how Abdulaziz just recited that, 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 that message, what he said in Arabic. And the eloquence with which you've recited that, that is actually what caught my attention from the start. Um, Abdulaziz, you, 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 you're, you're obviously a fluent interpreter in both the Arabic and Urdu languages, but what, what, what gaps me is how easily it comes to you. Have you had a background of, his, of languages previously, or was it only uh, since you started, uh, only when you accepted the Shahada? No, even before that, I remember 1996, when I was still in primary, I was uh, I was playing hockey. Sometimes in in training when some in, in some of our hockey matches we had Greek speaking you know, mm. players, and I learned a few things about Greek. And I remember also at school that uh, the students used to you know used to come in queues. I mean, asking me to write an essay for them in Afrikaans. Oh, sure. Because then Afrikaans oh, was, <laughs> was, it was a bit of a difficult language then. You know? mm -hmm. And everybody used to come to me also in the, the English language when I was in Dissimari, but in secondary. Mm -hmm. I used to get certificates, medals in, in the English language. So mm -hmm. I think it's an important thing. You know? Sure. I must say, I, I uh, you know, to a large extent, I was actually at the first, the first time I met you, I was actually quite embarrassed. Actually, you know, having learned Arabic from my late mum, Allah Murhamma, um, I could speak Arabic, and when conversing with you, your your language, it really, I, I was blushing. Subhanallah, you you really have a command of the, of the Arabic language. Um, Ashraf, you've also had some dealings with Abdulaziz. In fact, you've also met him at the court, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, um, I've known Abdulaziz for a while. We often met uh, in court. But uh, we had uh, the occasion to do a, a murder trial or part of a murder trial together. It was quite a dynamic uh, situation. The accused could speak Urdu. Mm. And um, uh, the, the, the facts of the matter were quite uh, interesting. And he attempted to kill his South African girlfriend and the child. Mm. And um, it appeared that uh, he was denying his involvement in that. Is that right, Abdul Aziz? Yes, he did. And when, the, when the matter commenced. Yes. yes. And uh, we were very grateful that you were there because not many people know that uh, an uh, Urdu interpreter is available because part of the um, constitutional requirement as well as the Criminal Procedure Act requires that the accused understands uh, the charge and the evidence in a language that he's familiar with. So I had the great pleasure of having Abdul Aziz interpreting, and I, I think um, mm. uh, that fact is, is, is often overlooked, the importance of the interpreter in the legal environment. Mm. Um, and I think tonight is, is quite unique because not only are you fluent in Arabic, but so is Nadim, and um, that makes for some good conversation. <laughs> but uh, I can almost guarantee you that uh, if we were if we were going to be speaking in an Arabic language uh, uh, on a on a professional basis, Abdulaziz puts me to shame. Abdulaziz, one very important thing which came to my mind when I met you at the court, <clears throat> and this is something that our viewers at home would actually hold uh, uh, will take quite seriously, is that being a Black South African male, when you have Urdu speaking. Uh, uh, complainants or Urdu speaking accused, so the people who are lodging, who are laying the charges, who had laid the charges, or the accused people, the people who are standing trial, or even the witnesses, um, do they? How do they relate to you? And is there? Do you find that there's any uh, that there's a difference being 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 a Black South African as opposed to them actually seeing a Pakistani national or an Egyptian national uh, being the interpreter? How do you find that 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 interaction between the two, of, between yourself and them? At times it's so difficult because people haven't uh, accepted me, <laughs> maybe that uh, indeed I do speak the, the, the language. It's kind of a shock. Mm -hmm. So most of the time uh, what I do before maybe they call the matter, 
I will go and uh, introduce myself to yes, either yes, the ma'am. complainant mm-hmm. or the accused and you know inform him that uh, I am because they'll be sitting there looking as to where should they be looking at uh, they're not expecting the these and and you know um in fact that my clients who I did have who were Urdu speaking they actually commented that Abdulaziz Urdu in fact was better than theirs so so I'm not alone in my in my in my uh, in my in my shame so to speak in fact we invite uh, the callers to to call in and to converse with Abdulaziz either in Arabic or in Urdu and you can see for yourself the man is more than adequately qualified highly experienced and has a definite passion for languages. In fact, he's a poet of note as well. But to come back to the legal environment, um, do you find that um, usually, uh, as Nadim was pointing out, that there is a cultural divide because people yes. expect people from the same yes. background and very, culture very to speak the same language because language is not just words. It's also in certain gestures, in, 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 in certain ways. Do you find that uh, that happens? Yes, uh, I, I, I did. Almost lost in translation, so, so to speak. <laughs> yes, because, um, you know, 33% of the South African adult population is illiterate. Sure. But um, you are now conversing in language and not in words. Yeah. So for them, it might come as a cultural surprise to see, as Nadim pointed out, an African man conversing in Urdu, because by and large, I think Urdu is not being taught um, in, in many madrasas in, in the present age. In South Africa, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Abdulaziz, um, going back just very quickly to your history again, um, we, you, you said you, you 2003, uh, yes. I remember we were speaking to you previously, you said 2003 you accepted the Shahada, is that, is that about right? That's correct. So, so take us from there, just quickly, and up to where you, where you, where you are now. Yes, in 2003, before, in fact, going to the masjid, I think a few months before that, I set my father down and told him that uh, I love this religion. Um, Because my father used to work for Muslims also. He was a driver. At times he would come with uh, that vehicle and they had this uh, Quran cassette and I used to play them without understanding Allah, them. subhanAllah. At times I would watch the whole car listening to Surah Ali Imran. I only understood Allah, a few years after yeah. that what I was listening to was Surah Ali Imran. And now I was understanding, you know, this uh, one uh, verse uh, where Isa alayhi salam is saying that um, inna, inna, inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum I used to hear that a lot, but I didn't understand it. I understood it a few years after and said, how fortunate I am. I never knew that I would understand what uh, what was being read every time we were watching, you know. Uh, that so uh, at the time when you were listening to it, you never thought in your wildest dreams that these but, words that were I would actually going to understand. Yes, Subhanallah. You know? Subhanallah. So uh, I, I, I discussed this with my father and, and, and told him that uh, I want to accept Islam. He told me that uh, I will support you, but uh, remember one thing. Those people don't eat anything, you know. They don't just eat any kind of meat, you know. You will just, you'll get, uh, you know, uh, there's a special type of meat that they eat. Mm-hmm. And I thought maybe it's, uh, maybe they don't eat cows because I was still, you know, mm-hmm. ignorant, you know, about uh, the religion. I thought maybe my father meant that I wouldn't be eating, you know, cow meat anymore, or sheep meat. That's what a lot of people think, yeah. you know, that halal is something else. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it should, should have some uh, chilies in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> yes. you know, the same official, khamr. <laughs> no more alcohol no more alcohol and no more I want to hear a lot more about about your uh, history and leading up to to where you are now and and your future goals and aspirations Abdulaziz uh, we're going to be cutting to a short uh, uh, commercial break I hope that you've enjoyed listening to Abdulaziz as much as we have so far uh, we will see you back soon inshallah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Legal Ease, the show that converts legal jargon into legal ease. Just before the break, we were talking to our esteemed guest, Abdulaziz Maloleka, and he was taking us uh, down a, a, a journey through memory lane, his own memory lane as to how he, from where he came, what he learned, what he achieved, and where he is now. Abdulaziz, you were saying that it was quite difficult, quite challenging. Your, your father, uh, the, the, the 
should I say, the understanding or the perception of the religion within the community was, was, was that it's a strict religion, that you're not allowed to do many things, that you, you wouldn't be able to eat many things, that uh, it was almost like you were coming out of society to, to an extent. How did you cope with that? <laughs> Um, I, I did manage since I got support from my father, you know, he said that he would uh, support me, um, but he wanted me to understand these few things before, you know, uh, accepting uh, the religion. So the night before, it was on Thursday night, I read uh, a book um, written by Sheikh Abdul Aziz, Abdul Aziz ibn Baz. So um, it was uh, about um, the Muslim creed. And there was, I read uh, this, you know, oneness of God, oneness of Allah, oneness of Allah. Like I said, that it took me back to what I used to read. I, I read the Bible alone. You know. After school, I used to sit down and read the Bible in my uh, own language in, in uh, Sitsonga and Shangani. And there was a lot of emphasis about the oneness of God, the oneness of God. I am a jealous God. In another verse where God will be saying that uh, I am God, your Lord, who took you out of uh, the slavery, you know, of uh, Pharaoh. You shall worship none but myself. We shall not carve anything you know, in the heavens, you know, and, and worship it. There was a lot of emphasis, and things changed, you know. It's, it's, it's not uh, part of our discussion today, but uh, this is... Uh, what I've ex experienced, it took me back to those verses in the Old Testament about Allah, oneness of Allah, oneness of Allah, oneness of Allah. I read this book. Firstly, I heard from that uh, fellow who tells me about the oneness of Allah. I read this book, Sheikh Abdul Aziz also, oneness of Allah, oneness of Allah, the attributes of Allah, things that I've never heard before in my life. You know. So um, I said, you know, I heard that people change names when they accept Islam. I said, no, I think I would like, uh, you know, I like this name, Abdul Aziz. That's uh, how the name came up. <laughs> no. So having a, a natural disposition towards languages and being propelled towards the Quran, when did you first decide that you're going to study the Arabic language? It was in 2003. I... I used to read my salah in Mabupani, the Imam Mulana Hamad Mudise. I learned a lot from him. I mean, I learned how to read Quran, I think in a period of four to five months, how Amazing. to read, you know. Yes, so I discussed this, uh, discussed it with him, to told him that I wanted to go to the madrasa. He was also supportive. He took me to madrasa. I was admitted there, started. Uh, it was a bit difficult. My first December, I mean, December, you know, the festive season, my first December, away from town, away from all those, you know, celebrations. And, you know, and completely different uh, environment. Uh, celebration, yeah. Yeah. And, and which madrasa did you attend? It was in Darul Ulum Zakaria, which is in Zakaria Park. That's in Johannesburg? Yes, south of Johannesburg. What period um, were you there? A period of seven years. Seven years. Yes. And what brought you to the Urdu language? Uh, we, uh, we had to <laughs> learn the Urdu language because most of our ustads uh, were, were Urdu speaking, you know, from India and Pakistan. We had to learn because uh, most of uh, the tafsil we call, you know, lessons we used to get them in, in, in the Urdu language. Although the kitabs were, were written in Arabic, so we had to learn both the languages, uh, Urdu and, and Arabic. I think what's amazing for me is is how easily you f you flow into the language. Is you you're so comfortable with with what I would consider extremely difficult languages, both uh, Arabic and Urdu, and and you have such ease with it. That's quite a quite a um, a, f a feat. No, an it's exceptional. I, I, to be honest with you, there's only one word that comes to mind when 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 I think about you, Abdul Aziz, and that's Subhanallah. Uh, your your achievements are really. Uh, from the Almighty, Subhanallah, and I wish you every success uh, going forward. Amen. You are currently at uh, with the justice system. You, you, court interpreter. You're a sworn translator. Uh, that is your job. That's what you do on a daily basis. What's in store in the future for 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 you? What do you What are you looking to do? What is your ambitions? Your goals? Uh, I want to see myself, uh, you know, uh, teaching at the university, as a professor, sure. Arabic and and uh, this uh, other languages, English and, mm. and Urdu as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. SubhanAllah. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, the, the, your path is, is so open and vast. I mean, you, you, you have so many 
so many abilities and I, and I see that just from speaking to you now and also having chatted to you previously one thing that I want to touch on with you uh, Abdulaziz is um, you we, we, we did a segment a show last week on uh, Syria and Egypt and those are the conflict territories and people coming from Syria and Egypt into South Africa uh, and those are essentially going to be majority of them will be Muslims and uh, we touched a little bit on that show about xenophobia um, what is your uh, xenophobia in general? But what I want to ask you is, have you ever dealt with a matter where it's involved a hate crime, where you essentially were interpreting on behalf uh, of an Urdu or an Arabic speaking person, where they were either the victim or the culprit uh, in a hate crime? Mm, no. No. Why I raise that question with you is because I don't know if you were aware, but uh, last year, Ramadan, there was a, a very tragic event that took place. It was the, a murder of a Muslim youth. Uh, he was with his friend uh, at a chicken licken and they were about to make iftar. And uh, he had a sunnah beard. It was a nice, full, long beard. And they walked into the chicken licken and they sat down and they spoke to um, the... the um, person taking the orders and they made the order and an altercation ensued and I'll explain a little bit more in the second part of the show but ultimately what happened is that he was insulted due to his sunnah beard and that young Muslim youth was untimely taken from this earth Allah murham he was murdered now insofar as interpretation goes we all three of us always wear two hats the first hat is a Muslim hat. The second is whatever our profession entails. Now you're sitting in court. You are hearing this. You're hearing this, that a white South African man has now killed a young Muslim man and ultimately because of a beard. That's what the altercation, how the altercation starts. How do you shift between the two? That's that compassion and that commitment to Islam and that want to be angry and that want to be uh, antagonistic against this, 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 this murderer or this accused person um, and obviously your profession. I mean, do you find that difficult at times? Mm, so far, no. Because uh, in training, uh, I remember oh, one of our uh, lecturers used to, you know, they explained this word impartiality. No? Yes. That in fact it should be within you. Mm -hmm. no? So um, I I did stick on that. So be honest with us now. You've never been talking to a Muslim brother and and, and interpreted something in his favour just because you want him to go off scot free. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, be being a, a trained uh, interpreter, uh, you trained. You're you're a civil servant, and you receive training uh, by the Department of Justice. Yeah. So that's in addition to the two lang or, or more languages that you learnt on your own. And as you have indicated, part of it is absolute neutrality and no emotion. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been uh, faced with a situation where a uh, party in court would say that you haven't interpreted something correctly? Yes, I remember at uh, one stage in, in Johannesburg Magistrate Court, it was um, these four accused were charged on um, counts on, they appeared on counts of uh, arson. There was one of arson, attempted murder, robbery with aggravating circumstances. The, 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 uh, the, the complainants were, were, were of uh, Pakistani origin. The first witness testified everything went well. The second witness gave me problems now when it comes, you know, to uh, this because in Urdu you can say war, it means him. You can say it again, war, it means them. You can say war, it means her. And we had these four accused standing in, in, the, in the dock. He was not even pointing at all. He was just saying that uh, uh, war, meaning that that was his role, or maybe he had a knife with him. Or, but I couldn't, I mean, interpret that. It, that was um, the, the only challenge. Besides that, uh, I, 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 I never, you know, um, uh, uh, battled to, to interpret anything that he, he was saying. I only, you know, struggled with uh, that war thing, you know, because he was not, he was making it difficult for me. T towards the end, he, w he informed the prosecutor that this man is not uh, interpreting. In fact, uh, you know, he didn't interpret this uh, whole case, you know, properly. I was listening when I was in the gallery. 
Uh, so what they did, the magistrates said no. We can call. We can call another interpreter. So they did. They call our our senior interpreter, mm -hmm. who said that uh, they would call another interpreter from uh, from Kempton Park, who's of Pakistani origin, Anwar, who also went with me, you know, uh, for, for for training. He listened to that uh, whole case. He was called in the box to come and testify. He said no. He didn't find anything difficult. He says himself also as a Pakistani. He would have uh, needed, I mean, uh, the, the, the witness, you know, to, to point out, you know, to point, I mean, w whether he referred to two or he referred to one person because uh, there's no, you know, mm -hmm. specific word in Urdu for him. Uh, yeah. uh, Look, a lot, them, of, a, lot of, a lot of challenges and, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's not going to get easier, but inshallah, we, we, we make dua that you will be uh, focused on your goal ahead and your aspirations and you one day end up in the university. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but I personally would have loved to hear from you a lot more. We unfortunately have to end the segment. We have another uh, Skype interview lined up. But Jazakamullah khairun for your time. And as I said previously, we've enjoyed listening to you. And we hope you have too. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'll see you again soon. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back once again to Legal Ease, the show that converts legal jargon into legal ease. Before the break and as we, just, as we were ending with Abdul Aziz, we mentioned that we were going to be calling, uh, we were going to be doing a Skype interview with uh, one of the great legal minds in the country today and one of the attorneys that is doing a lot for uh, the Muslims and the plight of Muslims uh, in South Africa and abroad. Uh, attorney Yusha Taub, um, he has been mandated by the Muslim Lawyers Association to sit a, as a watching brief. And for those viewers who don't know what that means, is that he essentially watches the case uh, from a, a, on a criminal matter. Because as you, would, you may know, a criminal matter is run predominantly by the state attorneys or the state prosecutors. And it will continue to be run by the state prosecutors. But the case we are very interested in, which is what uh, Mr. Taub has been involved in, is, is the murder of slain Muslim youth, uh, Allah Murham, Muhammad Fayyaz Kazi. Uh, he was slain in Ramadan last year uh, after an altercation ensued between himself uh, and his friend and two other white South African males uh, in a chicken licking in Rustenburg. With us on the line, uh, we have uh, uh, Attorney Yusha Taub. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Yusha. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakam Allah khairun for joining us. I know that uh, your, your, your diary is so full with all the things that you are doing, most of which is pro bono. So Jazakallah again for us and from the whole Muslim Ummah, uh, the whole Muslim ummah as, as a whole. Um, Yusha, you are involved uh, to a large extent with uh, the Kazi matter. You've been involved from the onset. Uh, you went through the bail application. I know that obviously you mandated me to assist you at a, to, to a large degree, but you were the influential driving force uh, and you were to a large extent also a liaison between the family uh, and the state and also you guided the state on a lot of things. Uh, uh, Yusha, Yusha, could you explain to us a little bit, uh, taking us from the beginning, what is the sentiment of the family, first of all, and the community as a whole regarding this Kazi matter? Well, Nadim, you know, there's been, there's been it's a difficult time for the family. They uh, were very saddened by the loss of a very young member of the family. Of course. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, his wife had recently given birth, so there was a child. He was the, the main breadwinner. Um, very close to his in-laws um, and, and, and a great loss generally to the family. Of course. Um, <clears throat> and um, shortly after the incident, uh, the Muslim Lawyers Association was contacted and I then liaised with the family in regard to, to who had been arrested, uh, communicated with the police, communicated with the prosecution, and then um, because there were uh, anti-Muslim sentiments, uh, expressed through the incident, it, it became it became uh, it became a concern uh, that, that 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 this shouldn't become bigger than 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 we think it is, and um, and so it, you know we got involved not only from the family's perspective, but in order to ensure uh, that, that 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 Muslims are not abused in this country in any way whatsoever. Just for purposes of the viewers at home, uh, Yusha, the Muslim Lawyers Association. This is this is a pro bono organization. Is that correct? <laughs> 
By and large, you know, um, what had happened, Nadim, is uh, pre the launch of the MLA about uh, seven or eight years ago, I can't be sure of the date, um, a lot of Muslim attorneys were doing uh, work in various parts of the community and assisting, and, and it was necessary to coordinate this effort. Mm. Uh, and we decided to get together as lawyers, and we launched the organization, and uh, Shukar, th- I see what we can. we're having a little bit of interference uh, with our Skype caller um, whilst whilst uh, the studio works to get them back in. Ashraf, you, you have you followed uh, the, the Kazi trial at all to, uh, to, to any to any degree? And have you been have you have you heard about it? I mean, being a lawyer and obviously a member of the Muslim Lawyers Association, what's your what's your feeling so far? Well, I must be honest, I don't know the status of the matter. I yes. know that it's proceeding to trial. In fact, that was one of the questions I would have liked to ask Yusha. Where exactly are we in the matter? How far is the preparation? As you pointed out, the preparation is done by the prosecution uh, together with the investigating officers. And and Yusha's role is there on a watching brief. So perhaps Yusha could enlighten us exactly where we are in the legal process at present. Yeah, uh, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Yusha. Ashraf, the matter is set down, Nadim, just correct me, for the 7th of October for two weeks that's for trial. For 10 days, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it's scheduled to start on the 7th of October. And uh, we're assisting the state as best we can in the preparation of the matter. There have been certain discussions. Uh, I have to, either confidential at this stage, I need to consult with the family on certain issues. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll shortly be, well, if, if, if the negotiations uh, don't hold, uh, and we, we go to trial, we'll start on the 7th uh, before a judge in the High Court in Joburg. Now, Ashraf, you, you, you do a large uh, amount of, of legal work as well, criminal, uh, sorry, criminal work, uh, my apologies. And um, one of the things that came up, uh, Yusha, uh, in this Kazi matter from the beginning was, and this was something that, 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 that I actually, uh, you know, really took notice of. And you'll remember when the first bail application came out, there wasn't too much uh, of, 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 of hoo-ha about it. And there wasn't too much of uh, excitement that this man was now applying for bail. Um, but it developed substantially when the second bail application came out. Uh, you should just just explain to our viewers at home, uh, obviously being, bearing in mind that you were the head uh, uh, ma- ma- uh, attorney on the matter, what, how did that develop from, from, from when it was the first bail application to the second bail application? And there was quite a bit of media hype in the second, in the second application. Yes, you know, uh, what had happened is the, the defense team had to ridicule the extent of the effect that this murder had had on the community, almost dismissing Mm -hmm. that it had had any effect whatsoever on the community and in particular the Muslim community. And evidence was then called um, via Iqbal Jassat from the Media Review Network to come and actually give evidence about what this incident had caused to Muslims, considering what had been said and what led to this incident. And what led to the incident was the abuse of, of Marum Kazi uh, 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 by, by a, 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 uh, a white male in a chicken licken in Mahalisburg. And so the, 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 they, they seem to want to uh, suggest that that was not the issue. Whether it, it constituted an Islamophobia, I don't know yet, but mm. it certainly constituted the abuse of a man because he was Muslim. He was ridiculed because of what he looked like, mm. because of the robe he wore, and 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 racist, Islamophobic comments were made. Yeah. So prima so, facie, so prima facie, which means on the face of it, it, it seemed to be a, a hate, a, 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 a hate crime where where religion was involved. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because I remember to a large extent again that the media painted it with that brush of Islamophobia, and 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 it really came out on Twitter feeds and on Facebook and on uh, news articles and uh, well and and not actually that vastly, but uh, in Muslim news sta- radio stations and so forth about the Islamophobic fatality and a lot a lot of weight, or at least let me ask you, was a lot of weight added? to that for purposes of that application in, 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 in the state successfully 
uh, denying him bail the second time around. Absolutely. I mean, you know, in the courtroom itself, when the defense attorney wanted to suggest this, uh, and did suggest, in fact, he testified, the attorney himself testified uh, for the defense. Uh, he went on to say these 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 horrific things, and 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 the gallery uh, was filled with members of the Muslim community and others, and 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 they reacted as soon as the magistrate took a break. They reacted, and the magistrate was a witness to that, and everybody else in the room was a witness to that, um, and, and 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 it simply arises. Uh, you know, from this world view that Muslim blood is valueless, that we are a fickle people, mm-hmm. um, and 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 it's happening all the time. I mean, we've we, we've had more than one incident of it, and, and and we certainly must curb it right here and right now. Yeah, uh, and, and this is this is you this know, is all part of it. You know what what what's interesting about that statement, Ashraf, is that and and you know you deal a lot with both. Uh, uh, types of people you deal a lot with the Muslim uh, clientele, and you also deal with a lot, a lot of with the non-Muslim clientele. But is it something? Is it a trend uh, uh, in the market, in the industry, or in, or in communities that Muslims don't really come out? They're, they're not really outspoken. I mean, I'm going to compare the Kazi bail application, which uh, incidentally was taking place. You sure you'll remember at the same time as another very famous bail application in South Africa, that of Oscar. Now. The media hype surrounding that bail application in Pretoria was ridiculous. I mean, people were camping out there, busloads of media, uh, both local and international, were camping out there for days, waiting to catch a glimpse of this accused person, waiting to get into the courtroom. And we were battling, to a large extent, Yusha, if you'll remember, we were battling to get a a, a courtroom full of of community members at first. Uh, Ashraf, what are your thoughts on that? Well... I think it's a very general question, but I just want to take a, a step back uh, before I come to that. And um, Yusha made mention that Kazi was attacked not by on the basis of his faith, but purely by the way he looked. And if you recall, the thing that brought Abdul Aziz to Islam is how he saw people looking, but he had read about them as the traditional uh, description in the Bible. Mm. So he said that all the prophets before him uh, before uh, Salaam alayhi wasallam, were dressed in that manner, and that's, and he could identify, and he was curious as to why the, these people in the modern age, in Soshanguva, were looking like the prophets that he had read about. So, part of this whole thing is the ignorance mm. of the people that say that uh, this this uh, this kind of dressing depicts only Islam, but in fact it is it is described very well as Abdul Aziz said in the scriptures before. Mm. So, so it's really not an Islamic dress. It's, it's, it's a dress of people uh, that, uh, that uh, lived to, to serve their creator throughout all, uh, all previous times. Now to come back to uh, what you asked, is it uh, you making a comparison between the hype around Oscar uh, Pistorius' uh, bail application and the bail application of these two particular accused. Mm -hmm. I think what is very clear is that uh, media looks for exciting stories. Now, there was an outcry that uh, the murder of uh, Riva Stienkam uh, received such prominence, but uh, at the same time there were heinous crimes committed against children and women in the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape. And a lot of people were asking why that didn't receive the same kind of attention. Well, I think it's very simple. Uh, Oscar Prestorius was an international personality, and this was a high-profile crime because of his uh, of his status mm. as as this athlete that was now accused uh, in a in a in a trial. You shall come. We need to come back to you because you are here with us on Skype. Uh, going forward, you've indicated that there is uh, sufficient preparation. Uh, what would you require or what would you request from the uh, Muslim viewership uh, tonight that are listening to you? Ishaf, you know, just listening to you and, and Nadim, I, I think what, 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 I, what I need to convey is we're involved in this matter because of the anti-Muslim sentiment and we're also involved because an innocent person lost their life. So. Uh, you know, we, 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 we mourn the death of all innocent life. We don't only mourn the death of Muslim life. Absolutely. And if there, was any, if there was any unlawful killing 
of 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 of, of any person. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I believe the MLA would react in the same way. Any form of hate crime, any form of racism, any form of oppression, um, we would react. So I'm not only calling on the Muslim community. I'm calling on all communities to reject these types of crimes, to, 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 to educate their own communities that the right to, to, to life is sacrosanct. Uh, Allah gives life and, and, and Allah takes life. That is the only basis on, on which it can be done. Uh, there are laws that need to be complied with. So I'm not only calling on the Muslims, in particular saying to the Muslims, stand up for your rights and don't be oppressed. We, we are a people that must be respected. Just because the West has convinced the world that our blood is of less value is not the truth. We are, we are Allah's chosen people and we must continue uh, to, 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 to do Allah's work on earth and, and, and be better Muslims and, and invite people to our way and change the attitude of, of the world uh, in regard to who and what we stand for. Uh, so I'm calling on, 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 on people to reject this kind of murder, this kind of hatred. We don't need it. We come from a rich history, sure. and that history sure. demands that we respect life in sure, all its yeah, it's, it's very true, and you know what you're saying is what you're saying is is, is completely and utterly true. And um, you should, we would like to come back to you on, an, on a, to continue this interview. We're going to be cutting through to an ad a commercial break uh, very shortly. Um, uh, in in a few minutes, uh, but okay. Wh while 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 we're waiting uh, uh, for that segment to come up, you say what I also wanted to ask you. Um, coming up now to the trial, the charge, as we understand it, is murder. Yes, correct. Um, that's the first charge. That's, a, that's the first charge, correct? Yeah. Just just break that down. Unpack that a little bit for us, let, so the viewers can understand exactly what 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 we're dealing with. Okay, murder, murder constitutes, when you deal with criminal law, you break it down into definitional elements. So the definition of murder, according to our law, is the unlawful and intentional killing of another human being. So we break that down into unlawfulness, uh, and, and in, secondly, an intention, and then obviously uh, uh, the killing of another human being. Um, and in, in this regard, I mean, you would have... In certain instances, uh, a defense like private defense, if you were attacked, then you, you, you challenge the lawfulness, uh, the unlawfulness rather, of the, of, the, of the charge against you. Whether there was an intention to kill or not is a different aspect. Um, so one would then have to lead evidence on the unlawfulness and the intention. We now know, uh, certainly we, you know, Kazi is a human being and that, that much. Uh, there are other aspects in this matter. Um, that the defense may be trying to utilize, and we understand it's the chain of events uh, that occurred after the assault upon uh, Marum Kazi, and uh, that is the, the, the various hospitals he was treated at, and so that may well be one of the defenses that they're going to raise in regard to whether they actually uh, were responsible, whether the accused in the matter was actually responsible for the killing or there was some intervening event. So those are the three aspects we're going to deal with. Now we know from, from so ba the... So basically, to, to explain it in layman's terms, whether there was something that happened between the time of the incident and, uh, astaghfirullah Morham, the untimely death of Marhum Fayaz Kazi. Yes, that would, that would deal with the, with the killing aspect. Now, insofar as the unlawfulness aspect is concerned, uh, you know, I don't want to give too much detail about course, the case, but the unlawfulness aspect of it is that they were attacked. That they were attacked. Um, and, you sure? and, and in particular, uh, the accused. There's only one accused before court. Sorry. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. You shall, seeing that uh, we have you for a very short time, and this is a live show, would you care to take uh, uh, telephone calls and interact with our callers who wish to call with in? Pleasure. So with pleasure. So at this stage, we would uh, definitely invite our callers to call us on 011-086-7701 or 2 or 3. Let me repeat that. 011 Zero eight six double seven zero one stroke two stroke three. You are invited to participate with us. This is a live show, and we have two very very prominent guests: Abdul Aziz, a court interpreter, fluent in Arabic and in Urdu, and Yusha Tayyib, who is on a watching brief in the Kazi trial. 
I see. I see. We have. Uh, we 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 have. Okay. We we. Um, sorry. Uh, you sh you were saying Yusha uh, earlier on that um, uh, you know there was only one accused before court. But from what I f and what the viewers might remember at home, that there were two assailants actually at the time. Just uh, explain that to us very quickly. Yes. What had happened is you know after uh, if both had initially been arrested. Uh, and both had been uh, brought bail applications, but when the evidence was led in regard to the uh, the, the second accused, um, there appeared to be just one incident of an assault uh, from the independent eyewitnesses, and part of that evidence was led, and so he was granted bail, and once we further considered the matter, um, it appeared as though he would simply have appeared on a charge of common assault, and we didn't really want to waste time and effort on that aspect of the matter. So uh, what then transpired is that after negotiations with, with the family and the state, um, it was decided that the charges against that accused, whose name I forget right now, my apologies, um, be withdrawn. And that was then accordingly done. Initially, he was given bail of 5,000 rand, paid the bail. Um, and then charges were subsequently withdrawn, and we decided only to pursue uh, accused number one. Are you, at, are you at liberty to, to, to reveal the I name of the current accused? I think we have a caller. Accused? Sorry, I, uh, I can't. Okay, salam alaikum. There's a caller on Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we have a caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, caller, could you introduce yourself? Assalamu alaikum caller, we are waiting to take your call. Can you hear us? We might have lost the caller, but caller? we might have <coughs> lost the caller. Wait until uh, until he's coming back. I was asking you, Sha, um, the, the name of, of the current accused, are you at liberty to, to reveal his name? Yes, yes, he's been in the papers. His name is Rudolf Vivius. Rudolf Vivius. Uh, and uh, he lives in Derby and he works on a mine in Rustenburg. Okay, so, so a simplish guy, essentially. I mean, uh, uh, not very complicated. This doesn't seem to be something where he went out and uh, uh, planned, essentially, to go out, find a Muslim man and murder him that day. Are you well, sure? I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. I mean, you know, the, the, the point quite simply is this, is if he did wake up that morning intending to, uh, because he's, he's, he, he hates Muslim people, well, that may be so, but I, I don't have that evidence at this stage, no. Okay, okay. Ayusha, is he currently out on bail or is he still in custody? He's been in custody since uh, shortly after the event. He went on the run. They couldn't find him. And then arrangements were made where he was, in fact, handed himself in. And he was, I, I think, about two or three weeks after the incident. Uh, he's been in custody since then. So just over a year now that he's been in custody. Um, uh, we, we objected to, to where he was being held. We thought he was being given preferential treatment. And he's now currently at the Krugersdorp prison because that facilitates access to his legal advisors. So that's quite unique from the Oscar Pistorius' case uh, in that what the viewers might be interested in knowing is that an accused can be held in custody until the date of the trial. And uh, is, it, is, it, uh, is it often uh, or is it common that the trial doesn't proceed on the day that it's set down? Is, does, this ha does that happen often? It, it, it does happen. We know it to have happened. But, uh, you know, this date has been well planned. It's been negotiated with the, uh, with the state uh, and the defense. And uh, it's scheduled to run on the 7th of October. And in terms of the new court rules, uh, ju judges want to finalize a matter once it's started. Yes, I, I assume oh, that's, 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 the, that's a matter. And that's why we've sat down for two weeks um, the, you know, it's it, because of the number of witnesses that need to be called and the nature of the evidence to be led. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm quite confident that we will start on the 7th, uh, barring something that the defense may want to raise. But the state is certainly ready. And this is in the South Gauteng High Court or North Gauteng? This is in Johannesburg, South Gauteng High Court. Thank you. I think we have a call on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam. Caller, please go ahead with your question. You can direct it to anyone, including uh, our guest on Skype. Gee, uh, Nadim, it's uh, Faisal Patel. I'm a journalist for Radio Islam, and I had the pleasure of uh, covering the Kazi trial and the uh, bail application uh, during the court proceedings. Uh, the one thing that I want to make clear 
to uh, the listeners and the viewers is that uh, one of the arguments that the defense put forward uh, during the bail application was there was no public outcry. Yes. So um, I'm sure you remember that as yes, well. Absolutely. And uh, as a journalist covering the story, I was uh, requested by the prosecution to uh, submit an affidavit. Yes. Now, we remember that uh, the prosecutor, another prosecutor, the defense attorney, I think it's... Um, Jack Herber, he mentioned uh, that uh, because of the public outcry wasn't uh, in the Bahalisburg and uh, uh, the Krugersov area, but rather in Lanesia, but it didn't really matter because uh, the, uh, the public outcry was not segmented to a specific area, but uh, Muslims in general. And uh, I want to appeal to, to, to everybody that, uh, uh, you know, Islamophobia has uh, impacted on that uh, whether, whether uh, the trial coming up now at the Joburg High Court that we should show support yes. uh, for not only the Kaji trial but for for standing up against uh, such atrocious acts against uh, people of different faiths and different cultures as well. Um, yeah, and it's a, it was really a pleasure. We've uh, obviously reported extensively on Absolutely. it on Radio Islam International, yes. and we've written several articles on it, and I think we should get more support from the public. Faisal, I think one of the most important things that came out of, uh, of, of your guys' reporting, which was really done uh, exceptionally well, was ultimately that the Muslim community is not segregated. It's not, as you rightfully mentioned, a community in Rustenburg or a community in Michalisburg or a community in Indonesia, but that it essentially is all one massive community and that the pain and suffering that is felt by a community in Fentersdorp where the incident took place or uh, if it was in somewhere else, is felt by everybody. Jazakallah Faisal, uh, thank you for that comment and for your appeal. Yeah, and gee, uh, the audience. One more comment on that. Um, like you mentioned, that uh, the, the community is not segregated. And I want to reiterate one point, is that the the point that Jack Herbert made, which is the defense attorney, he said that, um, you know, that we, there was no public outcry because people never really came in, num in numbers to the court. But we, as journalists, were tweeting from the courtroom. And the amount of feedback that we got on Twitter and Facebook, sometimes people don't want to be there in person, but they make their outcry on social media, yeah, which was obviously equivalent enough to, to, to bring out uh, the outcry from the public. Faisal, Jazakumullah khairun. We have to leave it there. We've got another caller on the line. But Jazakumullah and continue to do the good work. Jazakumullah khairun. A uh, call on the line. Please go ahead. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi Please. Salam wa alaikum caller. Wa alaikum salam. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, the question I have to ask is, uh, do you think there's sufficient evidence to secure a conviction against the accused? In um, the well, in the case of Mohammed Kazi, Yusha, I think you would be able to uh, in a you'll be in a better position to answer. Did you get the question? Sorry, I, I it was very faint. Can somebody repeat the the, the net effect of it? Sorry. Yeah, to repeat the question, uh, uh, Yusha, the caller asks: Do we believe that the sufficient evidence in the case of Mohammed Fayyaz Kazi to secure a conviction? Yes, look, I mean, it's like any other case. We've consulted with the state witnesses who have given us a description of the events, um, and we believe that there's sufficient in that uh, to se secure this conviction. But we're going in front of an impartial arbiter who needs to gauge that evidence uh, and cross-examine. So whilst we've tested to the best of our ability the witness statements of what happened, um, we, we, we certainly believe that we can prove substantial elements of the crime, and we're hoping to convince a judge likewise. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and I think a judge, and, and, and Nadim, uh, you were with me in the, in the second bail application and, 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 and in response to what Faisal said, uh, you know, the, the magistrate himself uh, must be con commended for having sensitized himself to the factual situation he was faced with. Yes. Uh, and, and I'm reminded in Faisal's call that one of the questions that the magistrate raised uh, in that bail application was to ask the attorney, Norkia, who represented uh, uh, the defendant, uh, the is, yes. um, where he lived. And that was primarily exclusively a white area. So he was not interacting 
yes. with the public, so to speak. Yes. And when he asked him about the radio station he listened to, it became one of the lighter moments in the courtroom. But it was clear that he was not listening to Radio Islam or Channel Islam or ITV, um, you know, living in this cocooned existence. So, uh, so, 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 um, you know, I think a judge will also be sensitive. But, you know, like I say, um, th there's an aspect of this matter that we, we, we mustn't make our own. Murder is murder, whether it's a Muslim or a non-Muslim, whether it's male or female. We need to sensitize our people that any loss of life yes. in any form is, is, is regrettable. And, and, and certainly this is the basis on which we're involved. Uh, being Muslim brings it much closer to home. I can't deny that. I feel Absolutely. allegiance to my own. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but at the end of the day, this is another matter that has to be dealt with on its facts, on its merits. Yeah. And from the evidence we have, it was clear that the violence was completely disproportionate. Uh, to, the to, abuse to was, 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 was commenced with by these white individuals yes. and it perpetrated on non-white people, irrespective, and particularly uh, a, a young Muslim, Muslim boy. You should just um, because this is legal ease where we try and demystify the law and make it easy to understand, uh, there's often uh, talk of the standard of proof in a civil trial and in a criminal trial. Uh, yes. Can you expand on what the standard of proof would be to, to, uh, in a criminal trial? Yeah, being a lawyer so long makes it a bit difficult, but let's, let's just give it a try. When one, when one litigates in the civil courts, um, it is for the party seeking relief uh, to prove on a balance of probabilities. So, in essence, to show to a court that his version of events or her version of events is more probable than that of a defendant. The parties are called plaintiff and defendant or applicant and respondent, and it is for the, the, the applicant, the one who seeks relief. In fact, the point and point of law is that he who alleges must prove. So, in essence, when you're litigating in the civil courts, it is... Yusha, we've been informed that we've run out of time. Unfortunately, we have to interrupt and then take this conversation further when a dedicated show would be scheduled. Which, which is coming up in a couple of weeks' time and uh, we'll be really unpacking a lot more of the legal matters. Thank you for your time tonight. Jazakumullah khairun, Yusha. Pleasure, pleasure. Salaam alaikum. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Jazakumullah Yes, and Jazakumullah Khairan to all your viewers at home for all the calls. Very, very uh, intelligent questions being posed. Jazakumullah to the radio journalist, uh, to Faisal Patel, uh, who is also a very integral part, of, played a very integral part in the case. Jazakumullah to our guest, uh, Abdulaziz, uh, and of course to my co host, Ashraf Esop, as always, that anchor, uh, great legal mind. We will most definitely be seeing you again in next week uh, for a more riveting show than you've just seen. Uh, 8.30, Thursday. Jazakumullah khairam. This is Legal Ease. Mark that on your diary. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.